When creating my last Surface Book 2 video on how it performed as a mobile workstation, there was a lot of emphasis on CPU intensive tasks, such as rendering. Since then, I've received a handful of questions on how the GPU in the performance base handles GPU specific tasks, such as the Mercury GPU acceleration in After Effects or rendering simulations in Turbulence FD. And since there were so many questions and I was so curious myself, I decided to make a video on it. Let's take a look at it now. For the comparison, I'm using the exact same machines as before, the Surface Book 2 and the ASUS uh, Republic of Gamers. The Republic of Gamers has an i7-4700HQ, and the Surface Book 2 is using the 8650U. GPU-wise, we're looking at a 770M in the ASUS machine and the GTX 1060 in the Surface Book 2. The ASUS machine is going to remain plugged in as it doesn't impact the CPU performance, but the GPU performance is significantly throttled down when it's running on battery. The Surface Book 2, however, doesn't have a difference in performance whether it's plugged in or not, so it will remain unplugged throughout the tests. First up is a simulation in Turbulence FD running inside of Lightwave. As you can see, the CPU and GPU render times on the Surface Book 2 are a little faster than on the ASUS machine, but the real story here is how the GPU alone handles the simulation, rendering it at almost five times the speed of the CPU. Impressive indeed. And although the render times on both machines were remarkably similar, it's important to remember that the Surface Book 2 wasn't tethered to a power outlet. When the ASUS machine wasn't plugged in, the GPU render times were significantly slower, with some instances clocking in even slower than the CPU alone. This is very important as the reason for my purchase of the Surface Book 2 was purely based on its mobility, and not having to be tethered to an outlet in order to handle complex simulations and renderings is a huge plus. And the reason a lot of you will buy this machine, as you can now do real work away from an outlet anywhere on your time. There are instances, however, where you will need an outlet, such as renderings and simulations that are several hours long, as these intensive tasks definitely drain the battery. And speaking of battery, there were some questions on how the battery holds up when the GPU is running and plugged in. I don't use this machine for gaming, but folks who do have complained that when plugged in and gaming, the battery still drains as the GPU uses more power than the power brick is able to provide. I am happy to say that when using this for workstation tasks such as renderings and simulations, even with the GPU running, the battery will still charge so you have no worries there. As a final test, I decided to pit the GPU against the CPU in After Effects with its software only rendering versus the GPU accelerated rendering. As you can see with the GPU acceleration, we get almost a minute faster in render times, and that's been pretty consistent with my experiences across the board. And not only with After Effects, but with Premiere Pro as well. I hope you found this video informative, and that it answers all of the questions that you've had, but if you have any more, you are always welcome to ask them in the comments below. I'm the All Things Tech Nerd, and as always, thanks for watching.